Take a look at this chart. It shows solar electricity production over the course of a week with time on the horizontal, power on the vertical and hour sharp values. Notice how on some days you get the characteristic solar curve while on some other days the top middle of the curve is getting clipped. This is a pattern that has become very common in Europe this year, occurring multiple times per week, and the thing about it that I find absolutely fascinating and why I decided to make this video is because if you are an electricity consumer and you schedule your electrical loads for a time when this pattern is occurring, you as a consumer can be 100% certain that your marginal consumption is being supplied by 100% solar electricity with none of the usual caveats, you're not taking away solar from anyone else, you're not causing the grid to lose efficiency, none of the usual asterisks, just straight up what it says on the tin, 100% powered by solar. In my opinion this is absolutely fascinating because for the longest time we've become used to thinking that when you switch on a light bulb it causes some gas power plant to produce 15 watts more and then when you turn it off some gas power plant produces 15 watts less and like yeah we always know that there's a grid mix below that which may include nuclear and solar and all sorts of stuff but when it comes to the marginal consumption it's always a thermal power plant right but nowadays a lot of the time that's just no longer true and instead the response can come from 100% solar in instantaneous consumption which is something that absolutely blows my mind so how is this possible. In order to understand it we have to understand the details of how these dips are actually occurring because they're a very particular phenomenon that's almost unique. These dips are not what we traditionally call clipping where the inverter is undersized because that would give the curve a flat top and these dips are also not weather related because cloud patterns move a lot slower than this. They tend to just make the curve shorter but still allow it to keep its characteristic shape over the course of one day. Instead these dips are related to overproduction, however they're not strictly speaking overproduction, it's a bit more complicated than this. Because if you look at the rest of the grid whenever these dips occur, you're gonna see that all of the conventional generators including coal and gas are not at zero. They may be low but they're not at zero and the production of solar is never really on track to exceed the total load on the grid, at least not yet. So so one would think that the solution to curtailment like this would be as simple as turning off the other stuff, but it's not actually that simple. To understand what is actually going on here we need to understand the merit order, because every single EU member state uses a deregulated energy market, or more precisely an energy deregulated electricity market, and the merit order is how such a market decides which generators are going to be active at any given hour of the day, so how does it work? Well the electricity producers bid their electricity on an exchange, and there are multiple forms of electricity futures with many different time horizons, but for the purposes of this discussion we are interested in what's called the day ahead market where producers bid electricity in one megawatt hour blocks for every one hour time frame of the following day. The unusual thing about this bidding process is that when the bids get settled everyone who got into the merit order gets paid the clearing price and not the bidding price. So keep that in mind because otherwise none of this is going to make sense. So when these producers bid their electricity in one megawatt hour blocks they bid it at the lowest price at which they are willing to sell it. No more and no less, just the lowest price at which they are willing to sell. And the exchange is going to order these bids in ascending order of bidding price. This is what we call the merit order. And of those bids, some number of them is going to be necessary in order to cover the consumption for that particular hour of the day. So if the number is say 10,000 megawatt hours, then the cheapest 10,000 megawatt hours are going to be selected to actually generate and get paid for it on that particular hour of the day. We 
refer to this as making it into the merit order. And remember, all of these megawatt hours that make it into the merit order are going to get paid not according to the price that they were bid at, but rather according to the price of the most expensive megawatt hour that made it into the merit order. We call this rule pay as clear as opposed to pay as bid and this system is what allows the generators to bid at their lowest possible price instead of forcing them to play a stupid game of bidding as high as possible but not too high which is what pay as bid would incentivize. Okay so far so good but here comes the unintuitive part. The lowest price that a generator might be willing to sell for is not necessarily the price at which the generator is going to achieve a positive contribution margin. So in other words, if making one megawatt hour costs you a minimum of 8 euros in natural gas, that does not necessarily mean that every single one of your megawatt hours are going to get bid at 8 euros or above. In fact, some of your megawatt hours might even get bid at negative prices, such as negative 40 euros per megawatt hour. So why is this a thing? How does this make sense? Well the answer is that for conventional power plants, turning the power up and down quickly is hard on the equipment and may be energetically inefficient. For example, the temperature fluctuations alone are just not good. That's how you get stress from thermal expansion and contraction. Another example, shutting the burner off completely means that your boilers and turbines are going to cool down to room temperature and all of the fuel that you burn to get them be between room temperature and minimum operating temperature is going to get wasted. Another example, hydropower plants are usually required to maintain a minimum environmentally necessary water flow and they are often not allowed to discharge high amounts of water through the spillway because it gets excessively aerated and they also can't discharge high amounts of water through the sluice gates because it's excessively cold and anoxic and all of that is bad for aquatic ecosystems so they have to discharge via the turbines. Another example, nuclear power plants can suffer from what is called xenon poisoning, where accumulation of a certain xenon isotope can make restart impossible for a number of hours after shutdown until that isotope decays. But in contrast to all of these examples, solar doesn't care. It's that simple. Solar can be turned off and on at arbitrary rates within the limits of how much the sun is shining of course but it absolutely does not care. It doesn't have any sort of inertia. Solar doesn't care. And so what you're going to find is that in cases of off-peak pricing like this, where off-peak nowadays means at noon, conventional power plants are going to bid a fraction of their power at the variable cost rate because this is the fraction in which they can change their power output up and down as necessary, but they're going to bid the other fraction at prices that are close to zero or even below zero because that's the fraction which they cannot really turn off without incurring very high costs elsewhere. In comparison, solar is always bid above zero but at low prices, so something like between zero euros and five euros per megawatt hour. And so what you can see is that if the merit order ends up clearing somewhere in the gas power plants, like it used to do in the past and how it still does during the night time, then any marginal increase or decrease in load is going to result in some particular gas power plant producing higher or lower amounts. But if the merit order and somewhere in the block of solar, then any marginal increase or decrease is going to result in that solar power plant producing higher or lower amounts, or more precisely, curtailing lower or higher amounts. Now of course it's a bit more complicated because when we're talking about unexpected marginal loads, they're actually going to be settled on the imbalance market, but the imbalance market also works with a similar merit order, and most of the power plants that, that participate on on the day ahead are also going to participate on the imbalance market and so when you have solar power plants that are experiencing curtailment on the day ahead they're probably going to be the same ones that end up covering the fluctuations on the imbalance market so it does work like how you'd expect it to work so that's why it works the way that it does 
So how do you recognize whether or not an event like this is taking place if you want to schedule your loads accordingly? Well, the only reliable option really is to look at the day ahead prices. If the day ahead prices are near zero or below zero, and this is happening during the middle of the day, then you're looking at solar curtailment. And it's not going to be reliable to just look at the solar curves themselves, because while some countries make it obvious immediately as it's happening, it's not always made obvious on the day ahead on the forecasts and you also have countries like Germany which have laws against curtailment although these laws are quite stupid because most of the time you're just going to find the curtailment is exported to neighboring countries instead so you're not really solving the physical problem because you can't really solve a physical problem like this with the stroke of a pen so you really have to look at the prices but finally, if we are looking at low or negative prices to recognize this pattern, does that mean that you as a consumer can actually benefit from cheaper electricity in exchange for your load scheduling? Actually, yes. All you need to do is switch your electricity supplier to one that offers time of use pricing. And this way you can get a full on pass through of real time wholesale prices. Although this does simultaneously expose you to the higher peak time prices. So be careful. For time imbalances like this, the solution of last resort is going to be electrical batteries. That's how the bulk of this problem is going to be solved in the future. However, to the extent that loads can be scheduled with little to no loss in otherwise productivity, load scheduling is always going to be more efficient than battery storage. I mean, in my opinion, the best reason to schedule your loads is because of just how cool it is to be able to claim that you're doing that task on 100% solar in instantaneous consumption, but all of the other boring economic and environmental benefits just make it even cooler. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe.